is one of your fondest memories of working together. And as well as, do you think the Harry Potter books has changed your perspective on reading? Uh, yeah, it definitely has. I think if uh, anyone were to ask me even now would I read like a five to six hundred page book, I'd probably be like, mm, is that a short one? <laughs> yeah, knowing that as an eleven or like even nine year old child, I read that without question and I was just completely absorbed in it, I think has completely changed my way that I, like, I know that I could concentrate on that as a child and there should be nothing now that I can't concentrate on at that level. I think we're so used to having like really quick um, like we get bored so quickly because there's just so much stuff to watch and consume and like one minute into a video we'll quickly just switch off and start watching something else. So I think reading for me is one thing that I know I can really just lose myself in and I think it's just so amazing when you can just, when you just see a child just engrossed in a book and there's nothing more rewarding than that and I think Obviously, for all of us, it's been really interesting when you meet a lot of the parents of, of um, their children that are huge fans. The one thing they're always so thankful of is the fact that they've um, got their children to read. So I think that's always a really... Or, or almost you find people who are like fans of the movies and they haven't read the books, and it's really nice to see them discovering it the other way around as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole series of Harry Potter was sort of, it was a transition um, for me from sort of reading, um, you know, smaller novellas, I guess, as a, as, a, as a kid, you know, children's books, and then I grew um, in my, throughout, throughout the series of Harry Potter, that by the end of it we were reading big, chunky novels, and then, so when I finished Deathly Hallows, I naturally just, my reading tastes moved in into that and my age as well I, I grew up with it and so now I always find I find it quite difficult to read smaller books I like I like to find big chunky novels that I can just uh, invest in and, and, and find the richness of the characters in the universe and I think that's um, I'm not sure I would have I would have taken that 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 journey if I'd not done it with with the Harry Potter series. I remember when we had to rewrite. John had to rewrite that line. The, 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 in the common room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was rewritten because of you. you no way, mate. No, 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 that line. No, that the was your fault. Uh, I think it was somewhere like. <laughs> you're going to get. I was, I was threatening. <laughs> I think I was threatening Malfoy's. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was Devon, Chairman. You, yeah, yeah. I said to him, you're going to get a fistful of Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason. No, it was hilarious. <laughs> so they had to cut it. <laughs> yeah, I we always spent a whole day on that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good line. Here, um, we're just inside the uh, the expo, the studio tour, so we got to look at your wigs, you know, your makeup, and all that authentic stuff. So, is there something that y'all have at home that's something from the set, or just a memento that's cooler than anything that we'll ever get to, you know, put our hands on? Um. If we did, they wouldn't be, he wouldn't have seen them, but in the sense that they were so obviously careful of everything we touched in the films because of reasons of archiving them so that everyone else could almost experience them. So if I told you I had, they'd probably come after me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, no, unfortunately, it pretty much exists. I actually, I weirdly find that coming here, like I remember when we all first came here for the first time and the shops were actual shops that you could buy things in. Like, it didn't even get to that level when we were filming. Like, we obviously had, like I remember stepping into Diagon Alley, we had it, we had the shop fronts and some of them were real shops you could go into, but I feel here actually is that place where you can go in and pick stuff up that you read about and actually take it home yourself. It's almost quite unbelievable. Um, I do, yeah, I don't know if anyone has anything. Oh, I stole the egg, the, uh, the golden egg. <laughs> <laughs> I only had it in my possession for about 13 hours and <laughs> some of the Warner Brothers <laughs> uh, uh, requested they wanted it back because it was worth $10,000. How did they know it was you? Because I was holding it and I was carrying it. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> in the hotel, yeah. It, was, it? it wasn't just me, it was James Oliver as well. They, well they explained. You got the number from... Oh yes, I, I did. I got away with that as well. Yeah. No, I, I took the number off Pruitt Drive, number four. Uh, so I still have that, which is quite a nice thing. But, um, yeah, they were quite straight. I mean, you couldn't really... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I nicked a spoon, uh, which is like the rebellious thing that I did. And it was like, yeah, it was during uh, the, the ball, actually, when we had, you know, like really fancy crockery and cutlery. Uh, 
um, and I nicked it. I don't know why. I just thought, I think it was just like, it takes on like, yeah. <laughs> We used to like check in our ones. They used to like count them and then count them out. Like as you even had like a moment break or lunch or anything. <laughs> I didn't take anything. It never occurred to me. And I think it was like mostly when you take things, it's like oh a souvenir to show I was there. You know, you go to Paris to get Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And I remember people started saying to me, "Take something." And I was like, "I'm on the film, obviously. Yeah. Here's a DVD." <laughs> what you guys are most looking forward to in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and Cursed Child are both coming out this year? Seeing them both um, and almost not, I think what's the beauty of when we see them is that they're going to be, everything's going to be an experience for the first time. Like even though when we're in, I always loved when we watched the Harry Potter films, like the scenes that you weren't in to watch the first time. It's going to be like that, but an entire movie and knowing the people behind it is kind of exciting because I'm hearing like snippets of stories that people who are part of the crew on Fantastic Beasts and stuff, so it's really, it sounds amazing. So yeah, I'm as excited <laughs> as any other fan. Really. I, w I went down for a set visit a couple of weeks ago um, and I, I have no idea what is known and what's not and what I can say and what I can't, so I'm going to say absolutely nothing. But um, it's uh, having known absolutely nothing previous to going to visit, I was absolutely blown away by, by what they've got in store for everyone. Um, and I can say now I'm incredibly excited about, about seeing it. I think it's going to... Uh, it's 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 going to really impress a lot of people, and I'm looking forward to seeing what um, what Eddie Redmayne brings to brings to the character and to the series. I'm sure he's he's not going to disappoint. Um, I have to admit that one of my most beloved characters from Potter is uh, Snape. So can you some passing something uh, you know working on with him throughout these films? Uh, yeah, that uh, really um, it was quite a, a sideswipe. I really didn't. Uh, see the coming really um, was devastated, absolutely gutted. He was such an amazing man, and yeah, I have so many, so many memories of him. So I, I remember once in one of the early films, I I drew, I drew a picture of him <laughs> in a potions class, and it wasn't the most flattering portrait. And um, I can remember feeling him breathing down my neck as he was watching me. Watching me do it, I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> but he was really cool about it, and he he, he kept he kept it, and uh, he was just the sweetest guy, very special, and very sad to, to see him go. Yeah, I've, yeah. I mean, um, Rupert nailed it really. Um, it was a hell of a surprise for, for me, I think, for everyone, and um, it was it was shocking. And um, I just remember, really, without wanting to go into any like details, just that, just did the warmth that he had on set and the fun and and the gravitas that he carried with him, like everywhere. He had an aura that when he when he went into a room, everyone noticed. And uh, yeah, I just it, it's. You know, it's, it's, what can you say? It's, it's just tremendous shit, you know? Yeah, I think he very much, I mean, we're obviously as children growing up and, and being impressionable and young actors who, it really was like our first experience as acting and being on a professional film set. He always had this incredible, um, incredible quality of keeping within Snape, like he was Snape, the minute that he like got out of the car in the morning, which is obviously incredibly chilling to experience as a child, but I think I think as a child you have this real high sense of energy and you lose concentration really quick, quickly, so having someone like that who almost was really professional and really a trained actor was a very interesting thing to, to experience as a child that I'm really thankful for and I think all of us across not only Alan but so many other actors within within that sense it it inspired us to have that professionalism which sometimes you could get carried away. I think that's 
true, like professionalism and also like a childlike quality and totally believing the story. Because yeah. I certainly found that like some adult actors you meet, they won't when when they when you say it's a child a children's book, they won't take it as seriously. They won't think it's a serious dramatic role. And it was such a like I think it was such a privilege that he did that for Snape. Like he totally gave everything to it and never um, underestimated Snape. And that's why it's such a textured kind of heartbreaking performance. Um, yeah, just like so generous all around, like as a person and in his art. That's amazing to kind of have got to see that in action. Um, you know, Rupert, you were talking about how it's been a long time since you guys have been these characters. It's been five years since the last movie. It's been 15 years since the first one, which is crazy. But it's kind of a new fandom renaissance right now with the theme parks and the new movie and the play. So is there any desire from any of you to return to these characters on stage? And, you know, Matthew and Rupert, you've done Broadway and West End in the films. Are you a little sad that you're not going to be in Fantastic Beasts? Like, is there any desire to, to go back to these roles? Uh, I wouldn't, oh, um, <laughs> um, no, I think it's enjoyable. I personally feel that 10 years within one role is a, a substantial amount of time in a way that um, all of us, I think, we're very ready and very excited at the next chapter in our lives, both professionally, personally, or even where we were physically. Um, and. I think it's always gonna. It's it, like it can never leave us as an experience. Therefore, I always don't. I don't yearn for it to be back in my life because it is part of me. Like I'm never gonna, never gonna, like not accept the fact that it's given me amazing opportunities and experiences that I never would have had, and I'm incredibly thankful for that. Um, and I just think it's generally exciting to know that it's always there for you, and I think that's why the fans, again, are just the best fans, because there's always somewhere to go. Um, whether that's just speaking to, to each other, which it's like when you have that experience that only, it's like hard to explain other people, whereas the people we've experienced it with, they just get it, you don't have to explain it. So we can come back to one another, or we can come back here, we, dress up, or you can come and be one of the characters, dress up on the street, yeah. Um, but no, I think it still feels like as part of me as it did when I was filming. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I think um, uh, Bonnie was, was bang on with that. It, it's not something that I will ever regret for as long as I live. I had the most amazing time and, and, it, and it, it set me up for the rest of my life in terms of, you know, I, I, I grew up from being a, a boy to being a man throughout those films and the people around there shaped me in, 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 into becoming who I am today. So it's, it's a huge part of my life that will never go. But in terms of the character, I feel like the story arc that, that Joe wrote and that we tried our best to put on screen um, was was a complete one, and I feel that we took. I feel I took that journey and and finished it the way I wanted to, and um, and he will always hold a you know a fond place in my heart. But I, I feel like I'm I'm you know I've, I've I don't have any more I can I can do with with Neville, and uh, I'm happy to to leave him as he is, I don't have any desire to, to return at the moment. Um, yeah. I, I don't feel that way at all. <laughs> I, feel, I have to say, like, as happy as I am that they're exploring the new universe and it's going to be new stories, I'm so angry that I'm locked out of it. Because, like, you don't understand, the first four films that came out, it was torture having to, like, wait for things and, uh, like, stalk everything on the internet and just every single day I'd be on MobileNet checking everything. And it was so, it was, like, such a relief, almost, and, and such a privilege to then get into it and be like, right, I'm part of the gang now, I know things. And now I don't know anything and it's really annoying because I thought I'd got past that. So, um, and I just, yeah, I liked knowing everything. Um, so, I mean, it will be nice to see it fresh and not be, uh, yeah, not, not see the behind the scenes stuff. Um, but I, I, do, I do miss being part of it happening. And um, yeah, 100% in a heartbeat, I would go back and <laughs> do, do more. I think there's, um, you know, filming at a young age, like, comes with a lot of innocence. Um, and so I think that's what was really beautiful about filming it when I was a kid. Whereas now, like, being an adult, if I was to go back and do it, I think I would, like, completely overthink and, you know, be really focused on 
on character development and all these kind of things that I didn't have when I filmed it back then and I think there was something really nice about that, just being able to enjoy the moment and, and being around like, you know, other kids um, and so it became a very real thing. Um, but now I think it'd be, yeah, very different, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they made a huge mistake not casting me. <laughs> um, no, I think I think it's going to be amazing. It's amazing that it's living on, and um, I can't wait to see it. Do you guys still read the Harry Potter books? And if so, which ones do you read? Yes. Um, I just got the illustrated Philosopher's Stone for Christmas, so I reread that. And just the other than that, it's like whenever I feel it, you know, you get feelings for certain books, like book six is if you want to cry, um, book four is if you want, like, adventure, just don't worry the end, or cry again, <laughs> don't read book seven either, no, <laughs> um, but yeah, I loved, I loved that they're reviving them, I really hope they do more of those illustrations, it was beautiful, and I think, like, actually Harry Potter was the book that made me transition from picture books to just storybooks, because of then it was like, why would I read a book without pictures? And I think I would love to have illustrated editions. Um, but then it would have made it even more cool. Um, no. <laughs> no. I haven't read them in ages. I mean, I love them. They were such a huge part of my life. But I think I've closed, closed that book now. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, I haven't read the book since, uh, since they came out. Um, I don't think I've ever read a book twice in my life. Um, so I read them all once. Um, I did go back and watch, I tried to watch the first film uh, a couple of months ago. My intention was to watch all of them um, and and then I got like in, into the first one and then my big stupid face came on the screen and I was like, time out, I'm done. Uh, and so I, I didn't get any further than that. So I haven't even seen the film since they came out either. Oh, it's terrible. Um, I read the first book again, uh, I wouldn't say recently, but um, I think that was the last one I read. Um, and it's just, it's so difficult getting through a book, I find anyway. And I was saying to Ivana just yesterday, like, I, I think I've started about 40 books and not finished them. Um, and it's it's great because like with Harry Potter you can all, you know, especially the first book, you just can't put it down, so I feel better about myself um, <laughs> when I do finish it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I haven't read them recently. I think I'm quite excited the idea of, it'd be quite fun reading to like a chat, like a friend's kid or, or, or a relative or something. I think it would be really enjoyable reading it to someone who's experiencing it for the first time and to sort of live through their experience. Um, like I brought some friends to, to the theme park this weekend and it's just been really enjoyable watching them experience this for the first time and you just you kind of, you have to remind yourself how incredible it is. I think it's the same when we had visitors on set and things. It, I would love to read it with someone for the first time. Great, thank you all for joining us.